do you pray and if you do um, how often do you pray and what do you pray about I try to pray every day it don't always happen but I try and I pray for my family all my family's salvation for friends and family's salvation and for health and jobs and um, our country, our president, on and on. <laughs> and every time I see an ambulance, I pray. And for about 20 seconds or so. Sometimes, um, I guess I do pray, but mostly when I need help the most. And then I guess I would pray for like my family and my friends and just make sure everybody's okay and like to help me get through like that really hard test or something like that. <laughs> I pray several times a day, uh, mostly for wisdom and for clarity. Um, yes, I pray. Um, I pray before I eat and I pray at night usually. And I pray about anything that's going on in my life. Like I just talk to God like he's one of my friends and just pray about what's going on. I don't pray probably as much as I should. I, uh, whenever we have, uh, Whenever I go to an event where there's a public prayer, I always bow my head and, and pray. And but you know, I'm I'm probably not as spiritual as I should be, so not often. Um, I pray every day. Uh, it just depends on what's going on in life. Um, I always ask for wisdom um, and spiritual growth and you know character growth and, and things like that. Um, and I really just have a relationship with them. Uh, that's mainly what I guess praying is, is just speaking to God and, uh, and carrying on a relationship with them. And just, I just talk to them and um, yeah, that's about it. The only times I find myself well, praying, I guess, is mainly when I need help in general. Like if something bad happens, then ask for help from whoever. So that's, that's the only time I find myself praying. I do pray, not very often. The only thing I pray for is for the health of my family and for mostly other people. Not usually, I don't. Uh, I think there there's more hope than anything in, in praying and everybody's got to hope sometime. Um, so even for a person who doesn't believe in God, you might catch me praying every once in a while, but it doesn't happen often. Uh, yes, I pray. Um, I try to pray daily, but it's hard to do sometimes. I pray to make it through the day, and that's the truth. How many of you guys are like that last lady who's like, she's last and says, I just pray to make it through the day. How many of you guys are kind of like that sometimes? All right. And I think that's, if you, if you listen through all the different, all the testimonies and all those interviews, then the number one reason why people pray is that kind of 911 situation. They're like, God help, I've got a test or I've got a family situation, I've got all this stuff going on. And, and and I need to pray. I, I need to talk to God because he's the one I know that can answer. But here's the most incredible thing about those interviews. Did you hear the guy about wisdom? He prayed about for wisdom. Did you hear that? And the one that actually said that he does not believe in God, both of them, what? Pray. They pray. And I'm like, okay, God pray to God. Who are you praying to if you don't even believe that there is a God? It's inside of our being that we need to pray. Because inside of our being, since we were created by God, that we need to talk to God and have communication with the God, our Creator. And it's just amazing. I, uh, growing up, um, my prayer life was kind of, um, I was a missionary kid and it was kind of stale because they, I, I just prayed during those 911 situations. You know what I'm talking about? The situations that something comes into your life and you're like, all right, I cannot do it myself, so I'm going to pray to God, call 911 and say, help I can't get up. I, I need these situations to be able to help. Um, I used to pray the Lord's Prayer as my super spiritual prayer. I would pray it and said, Oh, God, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
I'd, I'd go into that whole preacher mode kind of thing, and that was me growing up. But until I actually understood the Bible, my prayer life stunk. It really does. And it's definitely not where it needs to be, but God's honest truth, it's gotten better because I now actually have a relationship with God and I desire to talk to Him. And as we go through and talk about rethink prayer, I want you to just continue to imagine that you and I have the opportunity to talk to the Creator of the world. All right? I know about you, but um, it would be awesome if we could just pick up the phone and say, Hey, President Obama. Hey, Baba, baby. How you doing? <laughs> hey, you know, um, I know t times are tough, but hey, check it out. Let's go do lunch. Let's just go hang out one day. Let's go play some basketball at the White House, and let's just, let's just have a good old time. Wouldn't that be awesome? Just pick up the phone and say, Hey, President Obama. How great <coughs> political views are not. It's still to talk to the President of the United States. would be some, That would be awesome. But we can't. But we can talk to the creator, the God who created the president of the United States. I think that's so cool. So today we're going to answer three questions. Three of the most asked questions. And the first one is this. What is prayer? The second thing we're going to be talking about is their good and bad prayers. So how am I praying right? All right, Because that's probably the biggest question that's come to me and said, I'm praying all of this, I'm a new believer, or I don't believe in God, but I'm still praying, am I doing it right? And then the last one is, how do we pray? How do we pray like Jesus prayed? Alright, so let's go ahead and dive right, right on in, and we'll answer the very first question. And if you have your worship guides, you can take notes along with it, um, and we'll try to answer these questions as best we can. Number one is, what is prayer? What is prayer? Simple definition of prayer is this. A constant communication with God. Constant communication with God. That's prayer. You're, you're communicating with God. Rachel and I have a decent relationship. We, have, we love each other to death and everything. But if we would go, my wife Rachel, if you don't know this, my wife Rachel, if we, if we went two days without talking, would other people start wondering, hey, is there something wrong between you two? Or we would start saying, okay, in our mind, did I do something? What's going on? We're not talking like we used to talk. The communication has, has broken. And that's what kind of our relationship with God is. We love God with everything inside of us. But there needs to be that constant communication with Him. The longer we don't talk to Him, the, the more spread out our relationship with God will be. So I think when it says continual communication, I, it doesn't have to be one of these that, you're, that you always have to stop your job and, and say, okay, leave me alone. I'm spending five minutes in prayer and I'm praying. And then I go back to work. That's fine if you can do that, but many of us in our lives can't just take a five-minute break every 20 minutes and pray and talk to God. The cool thing is you can talk to him at any time you want to. So what is prayer? Talk to him. You know those thoughts that just keep going through your mind about other things? Turn or, turn those thoughts around when you're driving along, and all of a sudden a, I won't say <coughs> elderly, I'll say a young person pulls out in front of you and, and you're driving, and you're like, Lord, they're probably having a worse day than I. But help them, be with them, and allow them to get there. Quickly, but without getting to a wreck, because they almost killed me, type of thing. All right? <laughs> so talk to God about those situations and keep praying and talk to them. Here's some verses to kind of back it up. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 through 18, and it'll be up on your screen. Um, here we go. Be joyful always. Verse 17 is what? Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, I, I don't. It says, pray continually. We kind of get that. We need to pray all the time. But then it says, give thanks in what circumstances? Aww. Isn't that tough? That is so tough. You're having a bad day, or you're having a great day, and you forget to talk to God because your day is going so well, and you're like, I've got a made. I'm taking care of this day, and we're moving forward, and it's all about who? Me. But here's the deal. It doesn't matter if you're having a good day or a bad day. We need to constantly talking to God about all circumstances. 
All right, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7 says, Humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your what? Raise your hand if you've ever had an anxious, crazy day. Okay, thank you. I see those, those, both those hands, Donnie. Awesome. All right. All right. All right. Now you got me distracted. Okay. Um, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, um, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Everything, 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 everything. All right, and then I'll go to Jeremiah 29, verse 12. It says, Then you will call upon, then you will call upon me, and come and pray to me, and I, what does it say? I will listen to you. You will seek me, and you'll find me when you come to me with your whole heart. He will what? The Bible says clearly, He what? Will listen to you. Alright, so that, that's simple. And like that's really not that complex. Right? It's really not. Prayer is continual communication with God. Now let me pause and say this. Each of these three points are really a message within themselves. So if you need more questions asked or whatever, write them on your connection card or come see me and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more. But we can talk all about three different weeks about these, but we're not going to. Alright, here's the deal. The next one is, is there a wrong way to pray? Have you guys ever asked that question? Is there a wrong way to pray? Or am I the only one? <laughs> All right. I don't know about you, but sometimes, especially growing up, I would pray, say the Lord's Prayer, I'd pray something, and I'd pray, and it's like, God, if okay, I hope you're hearing me because I'm gonna throw a thee and thou in here, and I'm going to I'm gonna pray in a prayer posture, I'm gonna do whatever. I'm going I'm gonna pray so that you hear me, because I really want you to hear me. But God, if I mess up my words, which I'm very capable of doing, if I mess up my words, Please still hear me, because am I doing this right? I've asked that question so many times. So I'm going to show you another video. This video is, is funny, and it's meant to be funny. So if you, if you pray like these guys do, don't get offended. It's joking, but at the same time, we're going to be talking about the next step on how to <coughs> pray with a pure, awesome heart. So watch this video, and then we're going to discuss a little bit on how not to pray. Hi, I'm Johnny. And I'm Chachi. We're getting here ministries. You know, a lot of people come up to us and ask us hard questions about God and the Bible and spiritual living. And you know why a lot of those questions are softball questions for us? There are actually some pretty good ones. One of them being, how do I have a better prayer life? Well, good news, we got some killer tips to a better prayer life. Before we do that, though, let's start off with a title and some dance moves. No, we're not doing the title and the dance. Let's just kind of get into this. When you're saying a prayer in public, you want to use the phrase, Father God, as much as humanly possible. Just last week, I said a 30-second prayer and got 17 Father Gods in it. Now look, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying with a little bit of effort, it can be done. If you have a prayer request but don't actually want to request it, simply say, unspoken. I currently have six unspokens that I'm praying for this guy about. Johnny, sorry to bother you, but I actually have another prayer request. Okay. What? It's unspoken. <laughs> okay, well that's seven. And while I have no clue what I'm praying about, someone does. Just no one human. The Bible says pray without ceasing, and well, we believe in the Bible. Chachi has been praying without ceasing for over 32 hours now. Chachi, how do you feel? What, who said what? Where, where am I? <laughs> well, Chachi, you have been praying for over 32 hours straight. You feel pretty good? Can I get a restroom break? <laughs> Not if you want to fully obey scripture. Let's say you become privy to some juicy information about someone, but don't want to be seen as a gossip. We've got good news. You're good to go if you put it in the form of a prayer request. I still cannot believe what Jill said to Keith. I can't believe it either, but did you know that John got canned? What? Are you, are you, 
Let's talk about it in a prayer group. Some think your prayer position is irrelevant, but we have found that your prayer position can not only boost your prayer life, but can stretch you physically. Chachi, why don't you go ahead and show us some examples? Well, I wasn't really planning on praying, but I guess I could give it a shot. Okay. Oh, very nice. Good, that is classic. Wow. Seriously, wow. The last thing you do when you pray is fairly obvious. You say, Amen. And if you happen to be in a group of people holding hands, it's imperative that you accompany that Amen with a physical action known as the hand squeeze. The squeeze lets the people on either side of you know, hey, the prayer's over. I care about you, but I'm letting go now. And when you are holding hands, never interlock, because that can make your prayer partners a little uncomfortable. We want to thank you for watching, or shall I say, growing in your prayer life. Yeah, now can we do the, the title and dance moves? No, just kind of say thanks for watching and... That's seriously unreal. This is actually my miracle position. <laughs> All right, so now you know how to pray, correct? All right, now again, if you pray like that and you do it with a pure, honest heart, that's fine, that's great. But let's find out what the Bible actually does say about how not to pray. It actually does. So if you have a Bible on you, everybody should have a Bible. And if you don't have a Bible at home, take that yellow Bible home as your gift. So turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we'll find out actually what the Bible says about how not to pray. Again, these Bibles are yours, a free gift to you. Take them home with you. But Matthew chapter 6. Here we go. All right, we'll start at verse 5. And then it says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. Let's pause right there. Back in the day, there were these Pharisees and Sadducees. They're, they're, they're the religious rulers of that time. The people that were the holier than thou tried to obey the whole 600 laws of the Old Testament. Tried to obey them. And, and they, 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 they were very, if you want to say, pious in the way that they prayed. They would stand on street corners. And they would be dressed in their full outfit. And they would pray these whole beautiful, beautiful poetic prayers. And they're praying to God. But who are they bringing actually attention to? Themselves. Yeah, they, they were praying and praying and praying. And some verses even said, I'm praying and thanking God I'm not like the sinners. I want to thank you, God, that I'm not like the tax collectors. I want to thank you, God, that I am me. <sighs> Pious people. Listen, the Bible says clearly... If you're going to pray, don't bring up attention to yourself because it's praying and giving the attention to who? God. It's your relationship, not your relationship with him or her or whatever or stand up here. And I can say this very clearly. I can get some really good pastor prayers. Oh, man, growing up, I went to traditional church and, man, it never came from the heart, but, man, Old ladies would come up to me afterwards and pat me on the back and said, that was a good prayer, David. That was good. I'm like, yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> I had all the right words and all the theological words thrown in there, and I sounded good. And after I read this, I'm like, I am a, what's the word? Start with an H. Hypocrite. And we need to be careful with how not to pray. Bring in attention to yourself when you're praying. All right? And then we go to the next part. It says in, in verse, uh, we'll continue in verse 7. And when you pray, well, in verse 7. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans, for they think that they will be heard with their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows your needs before you ask Him. I mean, just think about that for a second. God already knows the prayers before you're even going to pray it. And many of you might be like, okay, why am I even praying then if God already knows? Because He wants a relationship with you. 
That's the whole, uh, it's simple. It's like God wants a relationship with you, and if you want a good relationship, you're talking back and forth with each other. And God's sharing truth with you from the word and circumstance and everything, and God just wants to talk to you, you, and because that's what prayer is, communication with God. So it's saying here, don't, don't, you don't have to go through this 10-minute spiel about, about life. Just go to Him and say, hey, I'm having a bad day. I need help. God, here is my prayer request. In a second, we're going to actually talk more in depth about how to pray. But here's the deal. You don't have to pray a long time. You just have to pray with sincerity and with a pure heart. If you do that, He will automatically hear you, and He will automatically start working out His answer for you. So two things, how not to pray. Number one, bring yourself glory. Number two, you don't have to do it with a lot of words. Just be sincere in your heart about it. Alright? So, hopefully that made sense. That prayer, and that's how not to pray. Now let's dive into how do we actually pray. We're going to continue to read, um, and we're going to read uh, what's called the what prayer? The Lord's Prayer. Alright? Now, before we read the Lord's Prayer, alright? And I, I, I went to, because we've got all the different belief systems of denominations and backgrounds and everything. So I'm going to share with you what Jesus actually meant with the Lord's Prayer before we even get started. And they'll be actually up on the screen. The first one is this. With the Lord's Prayer, all right, it does not have to be in order. Okay? It does not have to be in order. It doesn't, when our Father which are again, heaven, hallowed be thy name. That could come last. Or you can pray for your needs first. All right, but we're going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to teach you a little bit on why it needs to be given God glory first, and I'll get into that in a second. But the Lord's Prayer, very easily, it can be a tradition of reading it and praying it verbatim. That's another one. So it does not have to be in order, okay? And it does not have to be verbatim. But I, let me pause with this, in order. How many of you guys... Um, you might have learned the Lord's Prayer before, and you know it, and you know it. You don't have to do it verbatim, but you just come to God, and you're just praying and saying, hey, God, I, I, I'm having a bad day. Would you, would you please be with me today and help me through my day? I really need you today. You didn't ask about temptation. You didn't ask for forgiveness of sins. You did not go in and say, hey, hey, God, I give you the glory. You just went straight to the point without many words, and do you think God still heard you? Absolutely. So when you were praying and talking about the Lord's Prayer, number one, it does not have to be in order. Alright? Second thing, it does not have to be, um, doesn't have to be verbatim by word by word. Because I've been to many churches, and that is their prayer. They're praying the Lord's Prayer, and they think that that will get them through. If they're praying it with a true, 100% heart, verbatim, Fine. That makes sense? If you're really praying, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy you're praying it with all earnesty and heart, He will hear you. It doesn't matter if it's verbatim or not. And then, so that's with the heart. So we're gonna our, we're gonna have a little fun today. Alright? Um, no, this is not communion tray. It's actually a cake making exercise. <laughs> If you know anything about me at all, you know that macaroni and cheese is my gourmet <coughs> dish. Okay? That's what I can make. And sometimes I even mess that up. But, so when it comes to cooking, I'm not very good at cooking. So when it comes to this whole aspect of making a cake and, and I'm preparing for this, and if you know anything about Catalyst Church, we try to be a creative church and sharing things with you with illustrations and this, that, and the other to get the point across. And I'm like, what? A, we're praying about prayer. I know there's there's four points to it, and 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 then I I realized baking a cake would be pretty cool. So I, I went to the grocery store and I bought. I bought the cake mix. Came home, and I had the box. And I said, Rachel, come in here for a minute. And I handed her the box and said, teach me to make a cake. And she just gave me 
Because he handed the box back to me and said, in the most loving, tender-hearted way ever, you idiot. <laughs> the instructions are on the box. I looked at it and I said, there's even pictures. <laughs> I know that's water, I know that's eggs, I know, and it says heat, and it actually has like little thermometer things where you turn, and I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> but when I was preparing this, I'm like, how idiotic am I? Because listen, you guys come to me, and you come to others, and you come to other people, and you say, teach me, teach me, teach me on how to do this or do that. And I'm going to say this as tenderheartedly as Rachel did. The instructions are in the book. <laughs> Open your Bible once in a while. Read it. And you will be able to find the instructions for all your questions. Still come back to Catalyst. But your instructions are here. Open up your Bible. And if you, you're like, hey, I don't understand how to do this or do this. Kind of like the cake mix. I'm like, I don't even know how to turn on the oven. She's like, push and turn 350 degrees. I'm like, oh, that's easy. But still, instructions were given, but there still needs to be some extra help with it. The truth of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is your instruction booklet for life. You don't need any other book. Mm -hmm. All right? So we, uh, so I said, okay, Rachel, here, here's the deal. I'm going to make this cake. And, and it, um, open it up. It says the very first thing you need is the cake mix. All right? So the cake mix. So I came up with a, an acrostic, not an acrostic, but four S's. S's, S's on how to pray. Now the first S comes from the very first part, and the first S is surrender, surrender, all right? What does it say? Our Father, <coughs> which art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your what? Your will be done. We know it, we know it, we know it, but what does that mean? It means simply this, you give God the glory that he deserves. We talked about who God is <coughs> last week and the deserving God, that He is an all-powerful, all-knowing God. We talked about that last week, but this week, let's make it very practical. When you're praying and talking to God, I think the very first thing you should pray, if it's a 911 circumstance, that's, for, that's fine. But remember who you're praying to. The very first thing we need when we're making a cake is the cake mix. But check this out. If we had no cake mix, and we just had the eggs and the water and the oil, Will we make a cake? No, because you don't have the essential ingredient. And I think the essential ingredient <coughs> needs to be to remember who you're talking to. Sometimes when I pray, and I'll just kind of give you, a, 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 I'm a very visual person, a.k.a. illustrations. But I'm a very visual person. So when I'm praying sometimes, and I'm having that in-depth, prayer time with God, I actually close my eyes and I try to visualize God in heaven. I've never seen him. I just know what it says in Revelation. So I'm, image, I'm putting an image of God. So my mind is directed to praying to him. Our Father who art in heaven, holy, set apart is your name. Your kingdom come and what? Your will be done. So at the very beginning, we're already saying, I'm going to pray for some stuff, God, but no matter what, let whose will be done? His. Let God, your will be done no matter what. So, the very first thing that we need to do when making a cake, and I hope this doesn't go all over the place, is the cake mix. All right? So the cake mix represents, what's the S word? Surrender. surrender. And surrender means knowing who we're talking to and surrendering to His will and not ours. Alright? So the next one is, is supply. S. Supply. Water is a beautiful and awesome thing, isn't it? You, you're on a desert island and, and you have all this food. Will you quickly die with a lot of food or with a lot of water? You will die quicker if you have a lot of food because your body needs water. 
It needs its supply to last its life. And it says in, in, in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily steak. Does it say that? Give us this day our daily lobster. Give us this day our daily um, mocha frappuccino from Starbucks. Does it say that? It says, give us our day our daily bread. Our needs. What we desperately need. Need. All right, that's crucial. Right now, I want, I need water, okay? I need water to be able to survive. My throat is quenched a little bit, and I need water. I, I, I need water. But what I want more than anything in the world at this moment is the largest donut bank coffee with cream and extra sugar. That's what I, I, I want. I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. But here's the deal. What do I need? What do I need? Water. Water. I need my supply for the day. Give us this day our daily bread. And here's some incredible verses. All right, Philippians 4, verse 18. It says, And my God will, I love this, what? Supply all of my needs. It doesn't say all of my wants. And there's a big difference. I want to make sure you know this. There's a huge difference between what you need and what you want. I want a Lamborghini. <laughs> what I need is a car that will get me from here to my apartment and to my bus route. That's what I need. Even though it burns oil or gas or, or whatever, if that's what I want. Need. All right. And then it says, according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Then Matthew uh, 7, verse 9, and I love this verse. I absolutely. As a father, how many fathers are in here? Okay, you'll relate to this very, very well. And ladies, you and mothers will relate to this as well. But it says, which of you, if his son asks for bread, a need, a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who, what? Ask. And the, the kid there is not asking for a steak. He's asking for bread. And he's asking for fish. And we, as parents... It's highly unlikely if our kid comes to us and says, hey, can I have a, have a glass of water? You're like, no, I mean, here, here's some beer. <laughs> All right? We're not, we're not going to do that. Or if a kid comes to us and says, hey, can I just, can I have some crackers? No. Go play with the snake. All right? Same thing. God loves us enough that he will supply all of our needs. So according to the instructions, I want to make sure I do this because I want to make a cake later on. Um, I need one and a quarter. I'm good. Is that right, Ben? All right, good. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah, I'm making the case. All right. <laughs> and did you notice what I just did? I knew it needed water, and I knew it needed like a cup or something, but where did I go back to? The instructions. I went, we need to constantly going back to the Bible and says, what does it really say? Because in our minds, we, we hear TV shows, we hear all this stuff, and we're like, did it really say? And let me encourage you with this, and hear me clearly. If at any time, sometimes words come out of my mouth and I don't know what they are and they don't make sense and they don't correspond with what you think it says in the Bible, go to the Bible and find out what I am saying is true. That's why we give you a Bible. So you don't have to come back and say, did you really say? I'm like, did the Bible say? If the Bible said it, that's, that's, that's what needs to happen. All right, so here we go. we got supply. Oh, no. No. Not this one. Man. The next S is what? Sin. Let me read the verse to you. It says, Forgive us of our debts, our sin, as we have forgiven our debts. 
the ingredients is asking for eggs. What's, what's really cool about eggs is it's got a what around the stuff that we need um, shell. And I think in our lives, we put a shell around our sin. We put a mask on and we put that perfect, I come to church, hey, I'm, I don't have any sin. I'm, I go to Catalyst, the <laughs> most awesome church in the world. I come to Catalyst and I have no sin, but inside your heart, you are hiding the egg of sin. It's like, I can move around and go throughout life, and it's really not going to damage it. But what God wants us to do is this. He wants us to, what, open the shell? Crack open the shell. He's like, crack it open. And you're like, but that hurts. I don't want to remove that sin in my life. I'll just crack it open a little bit, God. And you can see what's inside, can't you, God? I, I don't want to give it all up. And God's like, do you want to have a real relationship with me? If you do, I already know inside you what is going on. And God's like, crack it open. <coughs> dump it all out. And I'll be all right. I will what your sins. Forgive your sins. Check these verses out. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He who conceals his sin does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces finds mercy. First John 1 verse 9, it says, If you confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from righteousness. Now, what, what is that word right before unrighteousness? All. The instructions call for Three eggs. But most of the time when we pray and ask for forgiveness of our sin, no. we just give Him one egg. Yes. You're like, God, you can have this sin. You know what other people know about this? You know what, I, I know I'm struggling with this one sin. But God, I know you, the instruction book. I know the Bible says... All your sins. Give up all your sins. All your sins. All your sins. And yes, it does. I want to encourage you with this. You need to take not just the one sin that is no big deal. I want you to take the deepest, darkest secrets of your sins and confess it to Him. And He is faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sins and all of your unrighteousness. Just give it to Him. Crack it open. It will hurt. And some of us say, hey, I'm living this life, and I don't care what the Bible says. Then you know what? You're holding on to an egg, and your cake, your prayers, will not be as effective as it was until you crack them all open and let them pour out. Isn't that tough? It really is. Sin. So we got, what are the three so far? We got S being number one is what? Surrender. Surrender. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Next S. <coughs> Give us this day our daily steak. No, our daily bread, what we need. The third one is, next S is sin. Break open your sin, confess to God, no matter how difficult it might be, and He will <coughs> forgive you of all of your unrighteousness. And then the next one is this, security. Right now, security. The instructions ask for oil. Alright, so it's asking for just, um, go back to the instruction booklet, aka the Bible, and it asks for a third of oil, so here we go. Alright, there we go. I feel so, I, I'm going to put um, Paula Dean Shame. I know about you. Have you ever got oil on your hands before? How does it feel? Greasy? It feels very slippery, doesn't it? If you see a pot of oil, or if you see a puddle of oil on the road or whatever, um, what are you going to try to do? Are you going to go straight and you're going to zoom right through that and step on your branch and go and slip through it? Or what are you going to do? It. So think of our prayers when it says, here, here's the verse, and lead us not into temptation, but what? 
deliver us from evil. What that means is this. There is going to be oil in your life. There will be temptation. It doesn't say that, hey, um, it, it does say that temptation will happen. Okay? It doesn't say that it will not happen. He's warning us, hey, we need to be aware that temptation will happen. So when the oil is on the ground, we need, we need to pray that God, we see the oil, we see the slipperiness, we see the, the, the situation that's coming, and pray to God that we what? Go around it. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from who? The evil one. The devil is so good. About five minutes before you do something, he's like, here's a little bit of oil. We need to pray constantly, continually, that we see that oil before we slip through. Because isn't the devil so very good at knowing exactly where to place that oil and that temptation in our lives? Oh, he's so good. Your temptation might be different than my temptation, but he knows my temptation and he's good at putting that oil so, we got S. First S, review again. First S is what? Alright, next S is? Slide. Next S is? Sin. Next S is? Sin. We need to pray all that. And we don't have to pray in order, but we do need to pray through these categories. And then afterwards, um, after the cake is all set up and it's ready to go, um, so we've got all, everything the prayers are asked for. And then after we do that, do we just <coughs> stick it in the microwave? not microwave. <laughs> we stick it in the oven just like this? No. What do we have to do next? Mix it up. So after we mix it up, we have to mix it all up and to make sure that it's all good. So... <laughs> Who said that? Who said we need power in that prayer? Shannon, you're 100% right. Check it out. We have the tool in front of us to mix it all up, but we need the power of God to attach to it so that the prayers can actually get to Him. We cannot forget who we're talking to. We have a God who is so much more powerful, so much more awesome. He all he knows it all. He's all powerful. He's omnipresent. He's always with us. And we forget because sometimes it's so easy for us to just say, I can, it's not working. So we start mixing it up ourselves. And that's going to take forever. For one, it's going to be all clumpy, that it's going to be nasty. Ladies and gentlemen, plug in to who you're praying to, and if you do, you're going to have the power of the Almighty Creator of the universe to hear your prayers. Got it? Do not forget the power needs to be connected. And some of you guys thought that that was me being stupid, which it probably would be. Okay, here we go. Stick it in there, and you mix it all up, and... You continue your prayer and you're, you can speed up your prayer. You can slow down your prayer. And you can speed it up. But the deal is you need to mix it all together. Take away the clumps. Because isn't it so much easy? Is, is it easy that we forget things? We forget things in our prayers. So don't forget the prayers. Because there's still clumps in here. Mix it all together. Mix it all together. Mix it all together. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So after the prayers, we got surrender, we've got supply, we've got sin, we've got uh, what did I miss? Security. Oh, good, you listen. Okay. Um, after that we pour out our prayers to God after it's all in, and we just pour it all out and say, Hey God, check it out. Not my will, but your will be done. Who wants to lick this later? <laughs> okay, now here, I, I don't want you to miss this one because this is extremely important. Can we eat the cake just like this? Can we eat it just like this? Yes, but it's kind of like not complete. And it's not, not what it's intended to be, correct? After we make the cake, we have to look at the instruction book and it says cook it for 30 for 30, uh, 350 degrees. All right, so we're like, okay, we're going to stick it in the oven. Uh, so we stick it in the oven. 
We have prayed the prayer. We have prayed the Lord's Prayer. We pray just like Jesus did. We have the old prayer in order. And then, what do we have to do next? Wait. We have to wait, and I hate waiting. I'm the most impatient person in the world. Ask anybody who knows me. I have zero patience. It's fruit of the Spirit, I know. Shut up. It's, it's impatience, okay? Rachel cooks brownies and cookies and all this wonderful stuff. She starts making it. I know what she's doing. She shoves it in, and ten minutes later on, the aroma of the biscuits or the cookies or the cakes surround the house. I want to take those things out now. I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. And I think we pray and we say, God, I want my answer now. You pray with all earnesty because it's not whose will, but your our who it's not our will, but whose will? God's will. So we need to pray with all earnesty and say, continue to pray. Continue to pray. Say the same <coughs> prayers over and over and over again from your heart, and God will hear you. But sometimes, and here's another story for another day, but there was a story about Daniel who was praying, and, and many months later on, the request came back because there's spiritual warfare going on over that prayer. So let me let you know, that's a whole other message another time, but know when you pray it will be heard by God, but the answer might take a while to come back. It might take years, it could take days, it could, the answer, oh, the answer could be no. Like, what? You have prayed and you have given your request to God, and you pray for God's will to be done, and you're like, man, I shouldn't have prayed for God's will to be done. I should have prayed for my will to be done. <laughs> if my will had been done, I would have had it done yesterday and all this. Here's the deal. Be patient. Wait. The answer could be no. It could be pray longer. It could be yes. Here we go. Plus some. And afterwards, you'll have the done cake. And here is the well, this icing on the cake. <laughs> You'll have a relationship with God that will be the most tasteful, most beautiful, tasty, sweet <coughs> relationship ever. So I encourage you to pray like Jesus did. Let's say it all together. You don't have to do it verbatim. Here you go. Our Father, which art in heaven, say it with me, how it says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you don't have a relationship with God in this room, it's as simple as asking. Notice I said with your sins, you know, all your sins, and you're in this room, and you're like, hey, Dave, you don't know the junk that I have had in my life. The sins, will God forgive me? Yes. Every single bit of it. So if you're like, Dave, I, I desire to have a relationship with God, it's as simple as this. You have to admit that you're a sinner. You have to believe that you're a sinner. Raise your hand if you are not a sinner in this room. Good. We're all sinners. You got the first point. Good. B, believe that Jesus Christ died for you. He came and He died for you so that you can have a relationship with Him. And three days later, He came back alive to conquer death. And He's reaching down and saying, I desire a relationship with you. All the price has been paid. Everything has been prayed. I desire a relationship with you. And sometimes we, we like, I see the hand. I see what you want, God. But you know what? I want to do things my way. You're not going to get to heaven your way, no matter how good you are or not. And then the last one is pray. Pray and ask Him into your heart. Just simply confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead and you will be saved. Would you close your eyes and bow your head for a second?